three states, right? Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. An average on October 11th. What do you see? Well, if you look eight years ago, Hillary Clinton was way out in front in an average of these three. She was up by eight. You go four years ago, Joe Biden was up by an average of seven points across these three Great Lake battleground states. You come today, it's just a one point advantage for Kamala Harris. But what's also creeping in now is that anxiety. The reason for that is because these polls are not really moving. Despite multiple battleground blitzes, despite uh, the opportunities she has had uh, across media outlets, there is still not a lot of movement from voters who are moving more towards her versus former President Donald Trump. Uh, in fact, I had one source describe it to me this way, quote, people are nervous. They know the polls are tight. And a lot of us are having these flashbacks to 2016, too. We know when it can go the wrong way and it can still feel fresh. Oh, they're in a full panic. I, to I told y'all, I said it's going to go as soon as she come out, she'll be up here, Trump be down here, and then it's going to begin to switch. Because they propagated and fabricated all of this momentum that wasn't true. And as soon as she start talking, people are going to see how much fuller she is. And they're not going to want to vote for her. This video is brought to you by Peer Talk, brought to you by Peer Talk. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, the big wireless carriers want to limit you to two choices of data, unlimited and unlimited. And guess what? Both of them are ridiculously expensive. Stop overpaying for your data. Many of us, you, you go outside and you use your data. And most of us are hooked to Wi-Fi anyway. They, they want you to pay for all that data so they can just take your money. Listen, that's like getting a whole uh, pot of coffee when you only want a cup. That's like filling your, your bed or your truck with gas and you only need a tank of gas. You don't need to overspend, especially in a time like this where money is funny and change is a little strange. So with Peer Talk, I call it my cell phone company, you can get the choice of how much data that you actually want. Listen to this. For just $25 a month, get unlimited talk unlimited text, and five gigs of data, which is more than enough data, plus a mobile hotspot. So stop overpaying for your wireless bill and get America's best 5G coverage with Peer Talk. Dial pound 250 and say keyword Brandon Tatum. Peer Talk's U.S. customer service team will make the switch too easy. There's no contract, no activation fee, and you can even uh, keep your number and your phone. That's one thing I love about Peer Talk is that you can keep the number and the phone. A lot of times when you switch carriers and all this stuff, people are fearful, like, I don't want to switch my iPhone. I don't want to switch my number. You keep all of that, baby, and then you can still switch to the best network. So all you got to do is dial pound 250, say Brandon Tatum, and you will save an additional 50% off your first month with Peer Talk. Like, subscribe to the channel. Links are in the description section. Let's get into this. Ladies and gentlemen, they panicking. I, I, you know, let me, let me just be honest real quick. I don't know what to think about this. Because I don't trust the election as much. You know, if, if I would be excited, I would be jumping for joy and saying, I told you so. And this is what I expect it to look like or even worse than this for Kamala Harris. If I trust that the system was right and that these people were in propaganda machines and they got some stuff that they preparing so they can make a mockery out of us. But if, if we take all that away. And, and everything is what it should be, they are in trouble. I knew they would be in trouble. I kind of felt she had a little bit of momentum, but she, she's getting exposed every time she go on the show. They don't know how to handle a crisis. So now that there's a crisis, she want to politicize it. Everybody else is against her. It's hard, for, it's hard for America to elect a woman to be the president. I'm just telling you. Most men and women don't see women as leaders. I'm just saying in a sense of this, leading the military, leading the country, leading the police department, leading the SWAT team. I mean, when you talk about intense levels of leadership, focus, and a, a type of masculine decorum, most people don't see women like that. Even women don't see women like that. So if you're a woman that think you're going to take over the country and be the commander in chief, you got to be a bad mama jamma. You got to be a solid chick, man. You got to be cut from a different cloth. You can't be giggling and <laughs> you can't be 
feminine and and, and, and being <laughs> looking cute and all this. You can't do that, man, because ain't nobody taking you serious. Yeah, you think she gonna go negotiate with 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 Middle Easterns? Man, women can't even drive in some of these things. They be whooping women, stoning them. They got to cover up from here to here. You think they're going to sit in the room with Kamala Harris and be like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Allah Akbar. You know, you know. <laughs> uh, you think they're going to sit in the room with Kamala Harris and take her seriously? Like the culture of some of these countries don't even take women serious to start with. But she also don't demand respect anywhere. Her voice alone is so wiry and bubbly and that like she don't even come across as being like authoritative. You know, like a Nikki Haley, even though I couldn't stand Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley was more poised of an authoritative woman than Kamala Harris is by far. Also, Tulsi Gabbard served in the military. You know, when you... When you see women that be that be doing stuff like that, you you begin to think, yeah, she she can do this. She didn't prove to herself to st- she can stand on the stage. If you can put a uniform on, put your life on the line, I, I, I'm I'm confident you have enough courage and fortitude to go and challenge other people. When you ain't done nothing but be a politician your whole life and you giggling your way through stuff on your knees, I don't think nobody believe you. Wrote a clip. What is with all of this bedwetting? among Democrats, maybe it's an eternal problem, but let's take a look here. These are, of course, the Great Lake battleground states, the states we've been focusing in on. If Kamala Harris wins these three, she most likely gets to 270 electoral votes. Take a look three weeks ago. Harris was ahead by two in Pennsylvania, two in Wisconsin, three in Michigan. Look at where we are today. The race is even tighter. Let me say this before we go on. You can never trust this anyway. Please listen to me. You're talking a one-point difference. The margin of error is like three points. We don't know what this is. I have never taken a poll seriously, and I don't think I've ever taken a poll. And I, obviously, I don't live in these swing states, but I've never been on a poll. There's so many people that haven't been polled. There's so many people that aren't likely voters because they never voted before. There's certain people that, you know what I'm saying, that's in the middle, that's, that's, that they're, vote, they're, they're polling Democrats, and they're not polling independents. Are they, are they double polling certain people in certain areas? They, they, so we don't know how accurate this ever will be. But for them to be throwing this out there, I'm suspicious. Even tighter than it was today, it's a one-point advantage in Pennsylvania, one in Wisconsin, one in Michigan. Look, that's limited movement. But in a year in which this race has been so static, we're talking one-point movement, one-point movement, two-point movements, and we see movements in all three, this is the type of thing that, at least in the public polling, makes Democrats worry. And I think that the public polling in this case is reflected in some of that internal polling, some of that reporting that suggests that these Great Lake battleground states have certainly tightened a lot, where at this point they are way too close to call. It is what you call a trend. It is when a you trend. See something like this over several states. For them to be giddy like this, it makes me feel like that this is theater, right? They, they want you to think the poll numbers are moving and it's getting t- – so you can watch them. But they just inflating this stuff or they just calculating certain stuff and rounding it up or down to make you think that there's movement because if they, they wouldn't have nothing to report on if there's no movement. And they wouldn't have a job if Donald Trump was up by six, seven points. They would be pulling the bed and quitting their job. CNN would go out of business. So they got to make it sound – palatable when you compare this to to, to four years ago what does it look like yeah so let's take a look and we're going to look at an average across these three states right michigan pennsylvania and wisconsin an average on october 11th what do you see well if you look eight years ago hillary clinton was way out of in law running an average of these three she was up by eight you go four years ago joe biden was and he lost up by an average of seven points across these three great lake battleground states you come today, it's just a one-point advantage for Kamala Harris across these three Great Lake battleground states. So Kamala Harris, at least in the polling, is doing considerably worse than Biden or Clinton. And, of course, Clinton lost in all three of these states, and Joe Biden barely won in all three of these states. So when you see Harris up by just a point across these three, I think that this is really the type of thing that gets Democrats really to worry, John, because the simple fact is Kamala Harris... They just, they just exposed something. She was up by eight, lost all. He was up by seven and won all three. 
Put this in your mind. That's why people go, it's 2020, 2020, it wasn't nothing. How, how, if, if, if this have any indication of any victory, if she's up by eight points and lost all three of these, he was up by seven and won all three. We know what happened in these states. The trend should be if she lost, he should have lost. At least not win all three because they need all three to win the election. Now, look at her numbers. She definitely is going to lose all three. It's doing considerably worse than either Biden or Clinton was. Yeah, at this number, what you start hoping for is somehow that the polls are, are actually right this time. Are right this time yeah. and doing a better time. And that's a little bit of a thin read to base your hope on. There may be some other reasons in general why Democrats are more worried. Yeah, so I, I, I think it just comes down to the fact that Democrats are more worried about a Donald Trump presidency than Trump supporters are about a Kamala Harris presidency. So angry if the opposing candidate wins. 52% of Harris voters say they'd be angry if Donald Trump won versus just 42% of Trump voters who say they'd be angry if Kamala Harris was. So I think this is more of a bigger, larger picture. It's not just that the polls are tightening. I think it's just that Democrats, John, are more worried in general about a Donald Trump presidency than the reverse in this particular situation. Harry Etten. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, fellas, uh, for just lying. But uh, they probably lying. I, I, like, remember, they were double polling Democrats. And we knew, I knew, listening to Alex Jones, that Donald Trump was going to win 2016. I, I had faith that he was going to win. I pretty much was like, yeah, he's going to win. Because Alex Jones was saying that they were double polling Democrats. They were trying to make her poll numbers look a lot better than they were. So people didn't just give up. And I think they could be doing that in this situation. I mean, they would literally be acting, if they actually did media like they're supposed to, they would be acting against Kamala Harris. Because if, if she ever go down so far that Democrats think it's over, they already feel the momentum from Trump, and they think it's already over, they're not going to show up to the polls. And, and they don't want that. Because if a Republican get in office, there's going to be so much stuff that come out about these people that it's, gonna be, it's not going to be funny. Anyway, I'll see you on the next one. Comment, let me know what you think about it. Bye. Oh,